The story of how this Chromebook, the ASUS ExpertBook CX54 Chromebook Plus, made it to our studio uh, this week is a very interesting one. And this particular version that showed up is even more interesting. It's a whole story uh, we'll kind of cover as we're unboxing it. So let's just dive in. But before we get in the box, uh, a quick word about our growing and just frankly really awesome Chrome Unbox Plus community. It's a spot where if you're into Chromebooks or Chrome OS or Google stuff, uh, where you can go and connect with other really like-minded people in a really positive space and, and chat and learn uh, and interact with other people that are kind of the same mindset as you. And it's just been this really cool place since we relaunched it uh, that I just enjoy spending a lot of time. And as a member over there at $2 a month, uh, you get access to Joe and I who are in there constantly, access to a whole group of people who know a lot about Chrome OS and Chromebooks and who are big fans of it, but also exclusive giveaways and AMAs with the Chrome OS team. We actually just had one of those uh, uh, just a week ago or so, and uh, it was it was awesome and a whole lot of fun. And again, it's just this place where you can go and um, really enjoy conversation uh, with level-headed people about Chromebooks, and, and it's a cool place to be. And so if you're interested in something like that, uh, and it sounds good to you, head over to chromeunbox.com forward slash join and you can get all the details, including the fact that uh, this is uh, uh, gives you an ad-free access to our site and uh, ad-free podcast as well as all the other stuff I mentioned. It's an awesome thing. Uh, the people keep kind of pouring in and it's just been a really fun place to be a part of. So if you remember way back in January when Asus first announced the ExpertBook CX54, which is what I'm gonna call it from this point forward, it was an interesting like announcement time because we thought it would show up at CES and well, it didn't. And then we thought it would show up maybe early spring and then it didn't. Um, and it was like we had this pre-production device, like we had hands-on with this thing, I think in January or maybe even December. And it was just this really odd timing thing because the, the one we had was definitely very pre-production. It was kind of buggy and all that stuff. We didn't realize it was going to be like six months before we'd actually see the thing. And then it finally showed up at uh, Google's new Chromebook event, the Chromebook Plus event that was in May. It was there and it had a really attractive price because we, again, we were guessing on all of this stuff. It wasn't available, none of that stuff. Uh, it came in at 699, eight gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage. 500 nit quad HD display, awesome build quality. All that stuff was on display when we were there at the event. Super excited and we've been waiting to get our review unit, like the actual one, because uh, I can't even get the one that we had to boot up anymore. Like I said, it was pre-production, super duper buggy. So this thing arrives uh, a couple days ago and I just opened it up because ultimately we don't want to ever ruin one of these videos by opening this up and be like, oh, they sent us the wrong device or, oh, you know, because normally these things get handled before they get sent to us. Um, and you don't want to open it up. And for some reason, reason we got a lemon and it didn't power on or something. And then we got to shut down the whole video and move on. Uh, so at least usually crack it open, make sure it's coming on, make sure it's the device we think it is. But the minute I cracked this one open, I noticed something a little bit different about it. So I hadn't looked at the side of the box, and so it would have told me, or I'm sorry, the back of the box, it would have told me had I done so, that this model is actually a different model. It's uh, It's got the same Core Ultra 5 115U processor, but it has 512 gigs of NVMe storage, and it has 16 gigs of RAM, and it has, I don't think this actually says it on here, but I figured it out after I'd opened it. I noticed the screen looked a little bit different. It's also touch enabled. So um, where this device, I feel like um, the, the standard Chromebook Plus model that's been on Asus's website for sale, and hopefully in retailers at some point, while that device uh, does not have a touch screen, has been one of those things that when people are like, hey, I want something, uh, I can't find the HP Dragonfly Pro anymore. I want something like that. It's been one of the ones that I've wanted to, to recommend, uh, but without a touch screen, it's, I don't know, it's a little bit different. Uh, from a build quality standpoint, I, I expect the exact same things basically from, uh, compared to an HP, but the HP had a lot of legs up. Granted, the, the, the consumer model of this is a full $300 cheaper. So um, this model though, uh, we're gonna talk more about it, obviously, it, it gets much closer to something like the Dragonfly Pro. And so uh, basic paperwork in here. What kind of charger do we get? 45 watts. So I always love these little chargers. They fit in a bag much easier. Uh, and 45 watts is nice. So you're not just giving you like a 30 watt. Should charge relatively quickly. Nothing else really in the box here. 
it's not what you came for anyway. Let's get this guy out. And just like I remember that beautiful powdered, all aluminum uh, chassis, incredibly rigid. I mean, that thing is just, there's no wiggle in that at all. Uh, obviously supports down here for fans, ports along the back for fans, all that kind of stuff. Uh, some feet on the bottom, we'll talk about those in a second. Speaker grills, uh, and not much else. It's got a little bit of the vibe of the CX-9 uh, that came out a couple years ago. So it's a little bit angular, but it's it's very thin. I mean, here's my phone for, for just quick reference. Um, it's very thin, I don't remember the exact, I think 1.39 or 1.69 centimeters is what comes to mind. I'm not sure if that's right or not, but I think that's roughly the case. It doesn't matter, it's super thin, uh, super light too. So I think it comes in a little under three pounds, I believe. This one, I, I could be making this up. This feels a little bit heavier than the one without a touchscreen, but that makes sense because a touchscreen should add a little bit of weight in there. Let's see if we still get the one finger lift. Eh, it'll, it'll get there. Feels like it's a little tight out of the factory here, but all the same stuff in play. Uh, you get this super duper lifted, uh, the ergo lift hinge, which basically it's not really, I don't think it's any more ergonomical, but it does get the back of this off the table so that it can vent and fan itself a little bit better. Massive glass trackpad here with a great click mechanism. It's not flopping around, feels really good. Uh, man, ultra smooth, very large. Uh, fingerprint scanner here uh, up top eight megapixel camera, which roughly translates to 4k um, Privacy sliders and check there before we log in and stuff Let's look around the sides because this is the other thing where this one actually beats the Dragonfly Pro uh, Port selection so you have headphone microphone. You've got two USB type A's You've got a full size. I did remember looking this one up uh, HDMI 2.1 so you don't have to worry about it not working with like 120 hertz and stuff like that. Uh, these are Thunderbolt 4.1 ports, I believe, at least Thunderbolt 4 uh, here and over here, and micro SD card. Uh, with this one, you won't, probably won't need that since it's half a terabyte of storage, but the standard model with 128 gigs of storage, be nice to be able to expand that if you want to. Kensington lock, because you know this is a high-end device. And before I open this up, before I log in. Uh, Asus did get back to me right before uh, we filmed this. And so this device, this particular version of this Chromebook is actually meant for B2B enterprise. And so it's one that you would get from like a reseller. Uh, but they did give me a link uh, to CDW. We will put that link in the in the description uh, that if you want to buy this version of it, uh, not the, the standard 699 version. Uh, it's actually at right now it's CDW, so they sh might shift the prices. It's around $920, $930. And again, that's upgrading you to half terabyte of storage, 16 gigs of RAM, uh, and then giving you a touchscreen option here. So, but let me get logged into this thing and then we'll uh, crack it open and talk about some of this other stuff like screen and all that good stuff. All right, so got logged in and all set up here. And just like I remember, this thing is just an absolute treat to use. Uh, the screen is um, definitely different than the other model that we had. So instead of having like that plastic surround like you normally get on a non-touch screen, this one is just completely flat. So that you have your bezel and all that kind of stuff, but it's the way you would expect. There's no break there. Um, and, and there are fully matte finish, you know, surrounded screens that have touch to them too. This one's like kind of sort of matte finish. Uh, it looks like there's a little bit of anti-glare treatment on here, but not a ton. Uh, it gets wildly bright. I mean, way too bright for our cameras. We're we're under 50% here to in order to not blow the uh, blow the shot out. So uh, it looks great. Quad HD, 16 by 10, 14 inches, uh, and at 500 nits of brightness. So uh, really impressive screen overall. And then above that screen actually is a camera that comes in at uh, eight megapixels. I'd kind of forgotten about that. Uh, this is just one of those devices that. It, it, it's been around so long and then we haven't been able to use it for so long like I just kind of forgot some of the cool stuff that comes with it um, and the screen or the, the camera looks really great so I'm gonna point it over here that's I mean it's darkness over there uh, there it goes so it's adjusting up uh, pretty impressively and then let me show you a photo that I took real quick uh, while we were getting set up and I mean you can see the the detail level and the hair and all that kind of stuff so I mean it's it's able to record video at 4K, uh, and then it's an eight megapixel front shooter. One of the better, if not the best camera I've seen on a Chromebook. This thing looks really, really good. It's doing really great in all the different lighting conditions and stuff. It's not freaking out under the big studio lights. So 
uh, very well done on the camera. And then you got the speakers. While a lot of people are gonna wanna compare this or try to like compare and contrast it with the HP Dragonfly, um, it's not on that level from a speaker standpoint. Most laptops, I don't think any laptops really are uh, completely, you could argue maybe the MacBooks, stuff like that maybe are in that, in that realm. But uh, this thing holds its own. Like listen to the spoken word here. You're hearing my voice like real time, like live. Here's it coming from the Chromebook. Acer Chromebook Plus 514 is a device I didn't fully appreciate until I actually spent some real time Pretty with it. Good. Every single day, absolutely affordable. Since it debuted, it's 100% worth music your here. consideration. So let's get into it. I'm catching some of those low Before tones. So that's nice. I mean, obviously, you know, on a on any laptop, spoken word sounding awesome is probably the most important thing because you're going to be in video calls and that kind of stuff. Being able to hear those spoken words uh, and, and feel like you're in that conversation, super important. This thing's going to do that very well for you. So that takes care of the screen. Uh, the, obviously, the, the camera does have a privacy shutter up here, which is always a nice touch. Uh, the keyboard feels amazing. Like, listen to the, the click on these things. Every single, the new Acer Chrome. <laughs> Still clicked in there. Sorry about that. Now listen. Really nice and quiet, but such a massive amount of feedback on, on the click here. It's impossible for me to obviously show that to you, but nice amount of travel. Uh, and since it's a nice sturdy keyframe, obviously as well, and this, this keyword feels great. It's gonna be a real pleasure getting to type on this. And then massive glass trackpad here. Great click mechanism that, that clicks basically anywhere. Eh, at the top it gets a little tough, but anywhere you're gonna to go to click, no problem there, but it's not flopping around. It's glass, it's smooth, it's large. Great feeling trackpad. And then uh, obviously you get the uh, fingerprint scanner here as well. It just makes logging in so much nicer. Like I'm used to using a pen uh, all the time. I've got one set up that I can kind of do by memory, uh, but it's still nicer to just be able to open the Chromebook and touch this and be logged in. It's a nice touch. I love that always uh, being there. Uh, and then on the inside of this thing, this particular model, again, I've, I've said this before, uh, Core Ultra 5 uh, 115U, 16 gigs of DDR5 RAM, and then 512 gigs of NVMe storage for 920 bucks. So you can quickly see, like as you start putting the pieces together, uh, who might be really interested in this version of this Chromebook. And sure, I know it's meant to be sold B2B and you know enterprise channels and all that kind of stuff, but I mean, this thing is top notch in just about every way, shape and form. I don't think I mentioned it, but there is backlighting on the keys uh, as well. So it, it is there if you need it. It's these gray keys again. So under big light, you're better off turning it off. Um, it's not my favorite thing in the world, but you know, it's going to work in dim situations the way you need it to. And during the day, you probably just want to turn it off. But overall, uh, the the main version of this thing that's gonna be available, hopefully at some other retailers soon, the 699 version, contains all the good stuff in this. So you're still getting the same processor. It's eight gigs of RAM, but it's it's that's a good solid amount of RAM. 128 gigs of storage is enough for a lot of people, especially with an SD card slot. You're gonna get the same ports. You're still gonna get a 500 nit screen with great viewing angles that looks awesome. It won't be touch, uh, but you're still gonna get an eight megapixel camera. You're still gonna get the same keyboard frame with backlighting. You're still gonna get a fingerprint scanner, still gonna to get that big glass trackpad so you're getting most of what you would get in this device uh hopefully you know at other retailers down the road and you're getting it for much less money so 699 and hopefully you know in, in the next few months we'll start seeing some sales on it and that kind of stuff and maybe you get it for 600 bucks but even at 700 dollars, this thing is ultra premium it feels amazing and i'm really really looking forward to the review process on it but guys that's it for this one if you enjoyed this video give us a thumbs up head down there hit that subscribe button and be sure to ring the notification icon if you'd like to be alerted when we make future videos just like this one until next time we'll see you